Welcome to Mondello Park and the day that the riders have worked hard towards all year, the Adelaide Masters Grand Finals. And with 75 points up for grabs in both super sports and super bikes, it's all to play for. And what a year it's been to date. <laughs> So who are the contenders in the Super Sports 600s? Barry Simmons has been talking to the leaders. What have you got to do to win? Yeah, I use my head to be honest. Um, no DNFs and, and just, just be consistent in, in the top three or four. Um, just really happy to do that in the city. The, the lads are they're up in their pace, so I seem to be stuck at the same pace all the time in the 600. So I need to up my game a little bit for, for, for tomorrow. But um, no, hopefully we can we can pull it out of the bag. Ryan's Super Sport opposition is the young Lisbon rider Carl Phillips in the Sandown Yamaha R6, who is 25 points behind the Waterford rider with three races to go. Presumably, you're going to have to win the races. <laughs> well, that's the plan. Hopefully, everything goes according to plan. But and I think we've been there there about all year, but it hasn't just came yet to get the win. But hopefully, today or tomorrow we can do it. In the Saturday race, McCormick looked good at the start in the CD Racing Honda. But by turn two, Carl Phillips was in the lead with Hare second and Mark Conlon in third. At turn four, McCormick seemed to be in trouble in fifth place. On board in lap two with Johnny Buckley and Davy Hare passed into the lead briefly. On lap four, it was a battle between McCormick's two championship rivals, Carl Phillips and Johnny Buckley. But Carl Phillips was dishing the dirt onto Johnny Buckley's screen, and Brian McCormick was way back in fourth place. So Carl hung on to take his first Adelaide Supersport win of the year, ahead of Buckley and Hare, with an unhappy McCormick back in fifth place, but still 11 points ahead in the series. So Brian McCormick is the hot favourite in super sports, but in the super bikes, the task is not quite so easy. It's his pressure time now. This is this is what it all comes down to at the end. But uh, no, look, we, we've as as well as the super sport, we've been leading this from from the start, and I, I don't really feel like giving it up. 16 points behind, so it's a bit of a bit of a big ask. Like, it's, obviously, I have to win, and somebody else has to beat Brian to, to make the deficit, even if we win all three. So it's a bit of a bit of a big ask. Um, we're going to be pushing hard. Lee is, Lee is obviously, he's, he's very talented and very quick rider as well, and he's done a lot over the UK in the last few weeks, which has brought him on a lot. I know Brian's carrying a bit of an injury, and I believe you've got some fairly hot toes. Yeah, we both had a bit of a big off last weekend at Silverstone, probably not the smartest thing to be doing, but when you're pushing at the front all the time, these things happen, and that's just, that's just racing. Like Nobody obviously wants to fall off, but it just seems to happen every now and again. But yeah, I'm, I'm fine. It's just some broken toes and stuff and a few bruises, but I think uh, Brian's a bit sore as well, so we're pretty even. Davy Hare separated the championship contenders in the front row. And it was Lee who got the whole shot. With Brian behind, then Kingen, Byrne, Mawinney, and Hare way back in 10th place. Johnson and McCormick were being shadowed by an aggressive looking Jared Kingen. By the end of the second half, Hare had fought his way back to fourth place. But all eyes were in the battle for the championship lead. Lap six and McCormick was ahead, with Hare right with the leaders now.
But after eight laps, McCormick was the winner and Davy Hare further spoiled Lee Johnson's party by taking second. Lee was now 25 points behind. Visitors to Mandelo throughout the year have had the added bonus of witnessing the Stunt Ireland competitions. The first Stunt Island champion comes from Mel, Castlebar rider Richie Ruan, who was capable of doing amazing things on his Kawasaki 636. I've been only a year and a half stunting, but love the sport and uh, it's a credit to all the other stunters too out here and for the performances that they all put in out here today. It was a very good day all around, great weekend. Stunt riders keeping us entertained as always. We're back in now for the longest and toughest race of the year. Some of our riders have already taken part in six races this weekend. Now they take on 12 laps of the international circuit for the Adelaide Masters final. All the big names are out for the big payday. Davy Hare on the DHR Honda. Lee Johnson on the Millsport Ducati. Our double champion Brian McCormick on the CD Racing Honda and Johnny Buckley on his Super Sports Yamaha. Brian McCormick, Jared Kingan and Johnny Buckley again carrier on board cameras. And the Commander Starters orders here with red light on waiting for the green and away it goes and looks like McCormick might have got the whole shot. And it looks like a, it's not McCormick, it's Lee Johnson again on the Panigale. David Hare in second position, Jerry King in third, McCormick in fourth, and uh, Carl Phillips in fifth. So a great run there from the uh, the 600 rider, Carl Phillips. Yeah, and uh, Mark Glasgow was in there as well, too, isn't that coming when he on? Dacklin's wanting. Damien Byrne got a terrible start that time. Some good on board shots here at Jerry Kingham on the uh, big BMW uh, S1000 to come through Bridgestone Corner, hard on the right hand side. Full gas now as they climb up the hill and look at David here. Oh, David here is a bit of a moment, so that allows uh, Jerry Kingham to get a bit of a drive, George. Can he do him into uh, Mazda Corner? Yeah, I think he is. He's up the inside. He has the inside lane advantage and holds the advantage. Some fantastic onboard action here from uh, Mondello Park in 2012. The camera technology is so good. Absolutely brilliant there. And Kingham up into second place. He's hard on the heels now of the big Ducati. Hare still in third place. Brent McCormick in fourth position. Look at Lee Johnson, he's lightning off the start, George. He was two seconds a lap quicker than anyone on the first race on the first lap. That's some going on cold tyres around Mondello Park. But what about the Super Sports 600s, Buckley and Phillips? And here we come round watching the leaders once again. Whoa, that was a terrific high side there from Nick McWinney, number 11, Nick McWinney, crashes out. That was a typical high side. Slightly ironic, George, he uh, knocks over the safety direct sign with his bike. <laughs> yeah, quite right, quite right. Uh, he tumbled and tossed a good bit there and the red flag has gone out. Let's hope he's not too badly hurt. He's okay, at least he's walking and feels rather sore. So this is going to be a complete restart. Red flag man runs to the side, Dave Cudler. The lights go green and it looks like it's a Lee Johnson again gets the whole shot. That Panigale is fantastic off the start line. Look at McCormick though, he's not giving up this time. Davy here tries to go around the outside of Lee Johnson. Maybe that won't work at four corner. And Jared King is in there again as well on the BMW, but Buckley and Phillips on the 600s. Once again, they're trying to mix up with the super bikes. Panagalli streaks to the front, but uh, Davy Hare in second position. He's not giving up. Look at McCormack and uh, Johnny Buckley having a good old battle there as they run through Bridgestone Corner. They're just behind uh, Jared Kingham. But no pressure on these guys at the moment. No championship points at stake, but there's a big money to go after. And another point to note there, George, is McCormack's out on his big superbike, uh, 1000 cc. So hopefully that technical issue has been put to bed. But uh, some great onboard action here from Johnny Buckley, looking at the back of Jared Kingham as they come back towards us. Lee Johnson leads, Davy here second, Jared Kingham in third. Yeah, and Buckley right in behind there in fourth position. So it's not a big disadvantage really to have just a Super Sport 600. Not really, but those Super Sport 600s are putting out 140 plus horsepower. Look at Johnny Buckley trying to go around the outside. It was at the fastest part of the circuit. They're doing 170 miles an hour there. Brilliant. But Buckley and the 600, a much more nimble machine to get through the tight bit just where they are now. Back to the leaders again. It's still Lee Johnson from David Hare. 
but Johnson not getting away far in front in this one. That's going to be a pretty tight race, I reckon, to the checkered flag in the big money one. And that's some run here from Johnny Buckley, number 222, on the module road and race Yamaha R6. 600 cc's, George, he's given maybe 70, 80 horsepower to these two front bikes on front of him. Unbelievable. And it's going to the lock corner this time around. Johnny Buckley's going to have a look up the inside on the exit. Surely won't have to drive out onto the start and finish straight to pass David Hare. And if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, Jerry Kingham's the uh, yellow BMW seems to have a technical issue, so he's out of it. But back in the action here, looking for fifth place, Mark Conan, 89, and number 32, Carol Phillips, really swapping paint here now. Just slightly off the leaders, and that looks like it's uh, Mark Glasgow behind him on the big Suzuki GSX-R1000. And I think that was Damien Byrne, number 48, and behind Glasgow. They head out past the big tree, heading towards Bridgestone Corner. Number 89 there is Mark Conlon. Mark Conlon finished second in the Masters Cup last year in this series. Yeah, and the man coming to play here is number 50, Mark Glasgow, on the big GSX R1000. He wants to battle with these two 600s. They're more nimble around the corners, but he's got the t power around the straight. Look at Carl Phillips riding around the outside of Mark Conlon, and that's close, George. He touches his front wheel, and that's pushed Mark Conlon offline. Yeah, it did, but it was really Conlon's own fault there because there was enough room for him just to squeeze in through. Yeah, and Damien Burns caught up on him as well, so this battle really beginning to build now. So all these riders bunching up, so uh, George, it could be a punch out on the last lap. <laughs> Let's hope not. We're back on board with Johnny Buckley chasing after David Hare. Buckley, don't forget, still in that third place, the leading Super Sport 600. Listen to that 600 scream, it's brains out. Into the squiggly bit in the infield. It's still uh, Buckley that we're riding on board with and still in that third position. What a ride that is when you think about it. It's 400cc and a lot of horsepower that he's given away to the two bikes in front and to the bike behind him as well. Look at that, George, in fourth position. They had the charge and Brian McCormack. Look at the lap time. This is going to be fantastic. McCormack's closed right in on the leaders. He looks like he's going to maybe even get to the front of this field. Yeah, this is the old Brian McCormack that we're seeing now in this final race of the season. He's chasing after Johnny Buckley in the Super Sport 600 and passes him as they go on the brakes into turn one. Absolutely broadside coming into forward corner. The back wheel was locked. He was speedway style coming into the corner. And that brings him right up behind Davy Hare in third position. So uh, McCormack in third, Davy Hare in second. The man at the front is Lee Johnson. He's not out of danger. Yeah, I think McCormack's coming for him. Yeah, and it looks as though McCormack's got the problem sorted out in the big super bike as well. Yeah, I wonder what the technical issue was, something electrical, and you know yourself, George, trying to fix an electrical problem is very difficult in a short space of time, but look at the battle here between McCormack and Davy here. These guys are absolutely on the limit here. But sure, when you ask any rider what his problem was if he breaks down, it's always an electrical problem, isn't it? Sometimes it can be an electrical problem caused by the Conrad coming through the front of the engine, George, but we won't go to that one. But uh, Davy here under a lot of pressure now from McCormack in uh, third position. He really wants to win this race. The pressure's off him. All the uh, championship has gone out of his head, and he wants a victory here this weekend. But McCormick in third place, and he's going to go for it to try and get the runner-up position ahead of David Hare. He makes it. Can he make the position stick around the double apex right-hander? He does. McCormick's now up into second place and charging hard after the Panigale Ducati. Absolutely, what a great move by McCormack there into second and uh, Lee Johnson now is going to be feeling the pressure at that big uh, number 111 on the fire blade of Brian McCormack. Third position, Davy here and he's not, uh, he's not out of the battle. Johnny Buckley have, hasn't given up and on the podium yet. Lee Johnson checking behind him, George. He knows McCormack's coming. It's amazing what the lack of pressure does to you. They're more relaxed, the Raiders, now. Well, is he more relaxed? Because he still wants to win this one. Yeah, he's just, and he, he looks like he's going to. He's closed right in the back of Lee Johnson. George, he was seconds behind these, and he's caught right up on them. And he's just about to pass Lee Johnson here, so this is fantastic. But then the big Panigale Ducati has the drive. It's hard to beat 1,200 cc's, George. And Lee Johnson puts the foot down Valentino Rossi style. This kid, what can more can you say about him? Absolutely magnificent all weekend. So on board with McCormick watching Lee Johnson through Adelaide turn two and out past the big tree on the right hand side towards Bridgestone. Some serious hors horsepower going through those tyres here, George. 200 horsepower plus on that Honda Fireblade. That uh, Panigale is 198 horsepower, so fantastic figures been pushed out by these uh, super bikes of, of 2012. That's as close as McCormick has got to the Ducati all year. Oh, he passes him right up the inside. A lovely clean move that was from McCormick. I think he's learned that one from Carl Phillips. As Carl Phillips has passed McCormick nearly in every race there this year at some point, but uh, Lee Johnson certainly hasn't given up on beating McCormick for this one. Okay, 23 year old Johnson isn't there an ex British super stock champion for nothing. He's a lot of experience across the water in England. There's an immense amount of talent on the field here, uh, led by Brian McCormack nonetheless, as he come through uh, Tarzan 1 and Tarzan 2. Lovely sequence of uh, two right hand bends here, and then charge up the hill towards the S's. Yeah, it's McCormack going to hold on for the win in this one. 
He hasn't got a super bike win so far this afternoon here at Mandela in the final round. Yeah, and with the pressure off, George, I think we're going to see the old Brian McCormack and Lee Johnson. It's going to be a slug out to the end of this match. And don't forget, David Hare still in there in a very close third place. It's a three way scrap to the checkered flag, the way I see it. Yeah, it looks like uh, Lee Johnson beginning to close in and make. And look, George, sorry, Brian McCormack has a technical issue. The bike's uh, beginning to cut out. Look at it. Yeah, there seemed to be a hesitation there as Lee Johnson goes to the inside line round Dunlop corner and out onto the front straight. Oh, he almost clipped Brian McCormick. McCormick's onto the grass. McCormick's onto the grass. But he's making no effort to get back onto the tarmac again. And he thumps the tank. What's wrong there, Jim? Yeah, it looks like the electrical gremlins are back, George, again once more. But uh, at least he got his championship. So what more can you get for a, a good weekend like that? Hard luck to the team and a, a great run by Brian McCormick. Back at the front, it's uh, Lee Johnson leads, and there's the disgruntled Brian McCormack, but uh, he's a double champion. What more can you say? Yeah, he'll be well satisfied with his day's work, there's no doubt about that. Back at the front again, but Lee Johnson from David Hare. David Hare's going to take over that number one position, and he does. Can he make it stick? Sorry, George, he uh, ran in too quick and uh, ran a little bit wide, allowed Lee Johnson back in front, but he's out of seat again, so he hasn't given up. He wants to beat Lee Johnson this one. But Johnson's going to have to work really, really hard in this last lap if he's going to get the third win from three starts. Yeah, Davy here is hot on his heels, George. He wants that victory and he wants the uh, the big prize money of the uh, final of the day. But uh, Lee Johnson defensive now as he comes towards the S's. Great bit of riding by Lee all weekend. But what can we say about Davy here? Pity we don't see him in Mandela Park more often, George. It is. It's just a pity he started only halfway through the season. They're two very safe riders, both Johnson and Hare. And Lee just checking over his shoulder there just to check where Davy here is on the track. So uh, Lee Johnson, I'd say by that manoeuvre, he looks he uh, he's comfortable. He thinks he can win from there. Into the lap corner for the final time. It's Johnson that holds the defensive inside lane. A little bit of a squiggle from the rear end. Can he get the drive out and stay ahead of Hare? He's going to win this time. Three starts, three wins. Three wins will be some consolation for Lee Johnson losing the Superbike Championship. And what about Davy Hare? The Lisburn rider has definitely now joined the big time. It's been an amazing day. First time I've had three wins in, in the one day. So big thanks to the whole team. The wee bike's been a dream all day. And made it a lot easier for me, like obviously Davy and them kept me honest there and Brian as well, but I mean, never know, we might be back back next year to entertain again, hopefully. And what a year the second year of the Adelaide series has been. Coming from a road racing background all these years and recently been involved in track racing, I can see where, maybe where the future is. Um, not to take away from road racing, it's uh, still fairly exciting, but road ra uh, track racing actually seems uh, a wee bit more spectacular and closer. I like it. We've seen uh, bigger crowds at Mondello, uh, more interest, more sponsors coming on board, better competitor feedback, and here today now, biggest uh, entry of the year. So it's all been positive. It's also a positive year for the young rider who gets the RPM Rookie of the Year award. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, just a big thanks to Adelaide and a big thanks to the panel for this nomination. Um, it's been a fantastic year. Coming into January, I'd never raced a four-stroke before and I didn't really know what to expect. And just to have the results that we've had has been absolutely fantastic. So thank you. So that's been year two of the Adelaide Masters Series, the series that has turned into Ireland's premier motorbike racing championship. We're glad to say that in 2013, we'll be bringing you more of the same. We hope you tune in, but until then, keep the revs up.